all here today, this afternoon. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Gail Jack. I'm the current president of the People's Democratic Club. And I'd just like to uh, begin with a quote. If by a liberal they mean someone who looks ahead and not behind, someone who welcomes new ideas without rigid reactions, Someone who cares about the welfare of the people, their health, their housing, their schools, their jobs, their civil rights, and their civil liberties. Someone who believes we can break through the stalemate and suspicions that grips us in our policies abroad. If that is what is meant by a liberal, then I'm proud to say I'm a liberal. <laughs> Does anyone know who said that? Some liberal guy? No. Close. Close. John F. Kennedy. Thank you. This is a big year for, for all of us progressives, Democrats. Uh, all of us people who care about our community, our country, and the world. And um, some of the issues many of you have been working on, like climate change, inequality, affordable housing and the homeless, discrimination, peace, water, transportation, gun violence. I want to thank you all for your hard work, and I'm very, very proud to be here. And um, Let's give everybody a hand. And I'm very proud to be here uh, to award to some, just a very few of the people who have gone beyond their, you know, their share of the work. Um, I would also like to acknowledge we have some elected officials with us this afternoon. John Leopold from the Board of Supervisors. <laughs> that's how people were going to be dressed. So looking out there, I'm worried about some of your weddings. Just a little bit. Except for, except for I saw Leopold's jacket. And that, I think he actually wore that to his wedding. There it is, man. There it is, right there. I've already put 40 bucks in that thing for uh, Greg Caput. So. You laugh, but you want him to win too, don't you? A little bit? I do. Yeah. That's what I'm going for. So do I get to kick it off with the winner, the achievement of the year? Yeah, we're going to start big, right? Because usually we build up to it, right? We give the, the other awards and we lead up to achievement of the year, but this time we're going to reverse it 
and we're going to start with a crowning achievement. Well, I have the honor of kicking it off today for the achievement of the year, but let me also start by saying it is important during this election season to remember that there are a lot of people out there trying to do some pretty crazy things, and not just the national level, but even at the local level, and to have all of you come together today uh, from a grassroots level really shows making sure people like Supervisor Leopold are re-elected, making sure the Assemblymember Stone's re-elected, really does make a difference for setting policy for this community moving forward, so I thank all of you uh, for being here. Now, the winner of the Achievement Award, uh, it's not like it's a secret because it's in your program, but I'm going to make it seem like it is. <laughs> and it's a 2016 award, but really it deserves to be a multi-year uh, Achievement of the Year award, given the fact of how they really did change the dialogue in many respects. And it's a true example of what can happen when the community decides that their voice is not being heard in, in local elected office, right, by local elected leaders. And this is for the DSAL Alternatives Group, and specifically the Measure P work that they did in the city of Santa Cruz. And it's very important, actually, to say, as somebody that serves with Supervisor Leopold on the Mid-County Groundwater Management Group, you know, they really have changed and shaped the discussion within the county to say, this is the parameters by which we should be having the discussion, right? And this is, there's a lot to be said about that, because the discussion in the city of Santa Cruz was going down a very specific road. And I think that a lot of credit to, is, is owed to Bruce and to Rick, who's not, Rick's not here today, right, unfortunately. But there's a lot of credit owed to people saying, actually, we've got a different vision for the community, and we can prove that it's viable. It wasn't just a vision, it wasn't just a thought, it was, and we're going to prove to you that this, this is a viable vision within the community of something that we can do for water moving forward. And so with that, I think that they definitely deserve uh, your appreciation. If we could ask Bruce Van Allen to take the award for 2016 Achievement of the Year for DSAP. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Zach and Nora and the PDC. Um, this is a great honor. Rick Longinati, my co-chair, couldn't be here today, but um, we both uh, are incredibly um, fortunate to have led a very strong grassroots movement. I know it included many of you. And that's really the key to this. This, this was up against a city council in which sometimes we only have one or two votes in our favor for looking at alternatives to desalination. And the, the very cool thing is that it, after we got a vote of the people to say that if Santa Cruz were to proceed with a desalination plant, it would first have to be approved by the voters. That was Measure P in 2012. After that, we stayed involved, again from the grassroots, and, and pushed and researched and negotiated. And what was developed, as, as Zach was referring to, is a plan that not only will give us water security, and not just in the city of Santa Cruz, but assuming all the deals are made and everything is worked out and the plumbing is put in, it will help the Soquel Creek Water District and potentially connect with other, part, other water districts around. And it will give us water security and the method of doing it, which is to use extra water from the river, which we have plenty of in the winter, even in dry years, and use that, to, use that for water supply and allow our way over tapped groundwater, which the wells go into, to recover. This will not only give us secure water supply and climate change proof water supply, but it also has incredible benefits for the natural environment by bringing that water back up. So it's really a win, and I want to thank everybody here that took part in it. Yay! And we will pretend that we had all this ready to go in advance. And just as I was saying, on behalf of the State Senate, Senator Bill Monning and People's Democratic Club, the winner of the 2016 <laughs> Achievement of the Year, Desal Alternative. <laughs> So I want to talk for a moment about the Tom Scribner Award. Uh, how many people in this ro room, how many people roam in this room, who know who Tom Scribner was or is? Oh, that's great. So this will be really quick. It, it, you know, what's important about this award, besides who it's going to, which is really the importance of it, is the fact that our community celebrates Tom Scribner, right? This is a man who was a socialist. We've heard that word lately. He was also a wobbly. He was many things. He wasn't just, you know, no one of them tops the other. Uh, you know, there's a statue in bronze of uh, Tom Scribner on Pacific Avenue 
made possible by folks at Bookshop Santa Cruz giving it a home. But here's the real deal about the Scribner Award, right, is that we name that award to honor somebody who has made a contribution to our community that is singularly important in the world of uh, cultural and political commentary. For close to ever, many decades, Bruce Bratton has observed and commented on a variety of political and cultural events ranging from movies to actors to the actors who do politics in our community. He has kept us all apprised of lots and lots of things through BrattonOnline.com. I didn't get paid for that, right? <laughs> and, you know, over the years did a lot of things in addition to that. He managed campaigns. Uh, some of you may not know that he was central to and active with a group that prevented the, what would have been construction of a nuclear power plant in Davenport. It's a part of our history long gone, right? So we celebrate the fact that he was part of that. So, you know, this is my friend. This is somebody I read a lot. Somebody I've known for a long time. Somebody who hung out with my parents a lot uh, back in the day. Please join me in welcoming Bruce Bratton. Pleasure to be here, obviously. And the first story, I could tell Tom Scribner's stories for about the next day and a half, I think. But the first story, and probably one of the two or three of might tell, is how I met Tom. Very important. Because it was when the when PG and E wanted to build the nuclear power plant in Davenport. I had just moved here and had just finished a seven-year battle against PG and E in Bodega Bay, which we won and stopped that nuclear power plant. I moved down here on Swanton Road, just above Davenport, and heard almost immediately that from a couple of neighbors, well, actually, uh, Bud McCrary from Big Creek Potter said, I know why, Big Creek Lumber, Big Creek Lumber. So I know why you're here, because you stopped that thing up there at, at, uh, at Bodega Bay, and now you know they're going to build here at Davenport, and you're here to, blew me away, blew me away. I had not a clue. So, one thing led to another. That was in uh, May of 70. In September of 70, the county fair. I went to the county fair. I didn't realize there was quite a group of people. Bert, Lois, Muley, Cynthia Scott, and a few other good old friends of all, a lot of ours here. They had put up an exhibit at the county fair protesting the nuclear power plant. And one of the things that had in this exhibit was some charred baby dolls. <laughs> to show the dangers of radiation. The county fair board decided this was so terrible that they X-rated the tent. I mean, literally, there was a sign outside the tent at the county fair saying this is an X-rated exhibit. So, of course, I had to go in. There, at the exhibit, playing the musical saw was Tom Scribner. And I had been playing the musical saw for about 20 years before I came to Santa Cruz. So he was the first... Yeah, for quite some time, the first musical saw player I had ever met. We got along famously, and as you probably know, we started, well, after, after Margie McMahon did the statue and had a $4,000 fee to pay, we couldn't figure out how she was going to pay it. It was Scribner's crazy idea, let's start a musical saw festival, which sounded like the dumbest thing in the world. Who would ever go <laughs> willingly to hear a musical saw, let alone two or three? <laughs> To cut a longer story short, this year is the 39th annual wow. musical saw festival. And so, okay, that's where I first met Tom. And then the other thing I wanted to also mention too is a big thanks to the People's Democratic Club. I was there at the well, at Brian Murthy and I've been trying to figure out exactly when and who did start it. I used to go to Ed and Carol Newman's gathering when I think. We halfway agreed it started with them, that they started the PGC and met at London, Nel London Nelson Community yeah. Center. So, I don't want to thank them for that. And uh, uh, 
That was it. That was it. That was the only thing. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> one, one more thing. You know, hold it now. Hold it. Uh, one more thing. <laughs> Back in the day, I used to think, wow, Tom Scribner's really doing great. What an old man he is. What an old man. He dies at 83. I'm two years younger than he is. So I caught up. Thank you. Thank you. So we're moving on to the unsung heroes portion of the award ceremony, and I got to say that uh, basically every every democratic activist is truly an unsung hero. People that yes, if nothing else, if you're willing to sit through Democratic Party meetings that I used to chair, you deserve an unsung hero award. I see a number of you that had to sit through those meetings, and the chair, current chair. And the first person that we have the honor of giving the award to is somebody that I think really embodies. The we in the community as opposed to the I. In fact, the Unsung Hero Awards that were chosen, these are individuals that really I probably didn't even want to get an award because they don't like to actually be acknowledged in any kind of public way. Uh, but my, I have the honor of introducing Matilda Rand, but let me just say some of the things that I think that all of you know that she's done. Who listens to KUSP other than Gary Patton, who's listening to himself? <laughs> Gary, you showed up. You're, you're in the arena, babe. <laughs> I mean, first person singular and the work around it is really an amazing thing. I mean, some of, I just was listening to actually some of Rachel's students uh, from this, this past week. They were telling amazing stories uh, about their life. And this gives the community an opportunity to, to be heard on a much greater platform, right? Similar to, to the work that's been done at Community TV that she's done, as well as one of our other award winners, and some of the local interviews and, and the videos that she's made on peace issues and more. But if you, what's interesting about it is these videos and the commentary are always on other people. It's always a production of somebody else. She's providing and amplifying the voice for somebody else, and that truly is, in many ways, the true definition of an unsung hero. So let's please honor Matilda Rand. Well, as uh, Zach said, most likely we didn't ask for this, and most likely we are not going to say much. So <laughs> <laughs> I remember this one person at the, at the Oscars, uh, I forgot which year it was in, but the only thing she said was, thank you. <laughs> you know, one of the films that uh, Matilda made uh, in 2006 had to do with um, a struggle to raise the minimum wage in the city of Santa Cruz. It was one of her, her first films, and I got to be along for that ride. So thank you again for that, and all the films you've made since then. The rest of the state has finally caught up with our then, I guess, very avant-garde approach to higher wages for working people. Go figure. I'm sorry that Sherry Conneval uh, is not able to join us today. Um, she just wasn't able to make it. Uh, and I can hear by your expression that, you know, this is a woman well-known and well-loved who, much like uh, Matilda and a couple of other award winners, um, toils constantly, mostly in the background, although we all know her and many more people than us know her, I first met Sherry and worked with her, uh, I, again, I guess, way out in front, long ago, when we worked together on the Coalition for a Safe Place to Sleep. The issue is exactly the same today as it was then, except there's much more law enforcement around that issue now than there was then. So, you know, in those years, um, Sherry has consistently worked on um, issues of fairness and justice for folks without homes. Uh, she has worked tirelessly on peace and justice. She is at every march, every rally, every parade. She is a letter writer extraordinaire, and she is an organizer who causes other people to want to get involved as well. So I know she would very quietly say thank you, and she would tell you, keep resisting the arms race, and keep resisting the notion that by killing people, we would make the world a more peaceful place. So this Unsung Hero Award goes to Sherry Connable. Thank you. 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 Thank you
So we have two more unsung heroes, and the one that I have the honor of, of introducing is Gail Williamson. And I'd like to say, again, another person that absolutely probably does not want to actually receive an award, but does a significant amount of work for the community behind the scenes. I know her through community television and the amazing work that she's done. But let me read something from the bio that I think you'll find interesting. Because in many ways, I think that this actually embodies uh, what, who we should be as people. She has supported countless people, young and old, of every imaginable background, with a place to sleep, a good meal, and wise counsel. Think about that for a second. It's a lot of dignity that she's provided for a lot of people. Really just the guardian angel of Santa Cruz activism. Please help join me in welcoming Gail Williams. Thank you very much. I am honored and very humbled to be in this room that I see full of activists. Thank you very much. So, all of the unsung heroes, actually now they're pretty sung out loud, <laughs> uh, the, the cup that the unsung heroes are receiving says the following, Thought you should know there's actually something on it. It's not just a plain mug. It says this. It's, it's, a, um, it's written by Alice Walker. Activism is my rent for living on this planet. Yeah. And isn't that true, right? Yeah. So next up is an activist who, well, there are many of you in this room who go to a lot of meetings. Steve Plage not only goes to a lot of meetings, but the diversity with which the brother works is really across the board is profound and meaningful. Everything from activism with the ACLU, a lot of work on um, issues related to homelessness and fairness uh, there. I, I have to check my notes, sorry. It's a long list. Solitary right, dealing around issues of solitary confinement and mass incarceration. Uh, he continues to work with the United Nations Association with Pat Arnold, no small measure, working with an activist like Pat who continues to work as an activist. Um, he works with suicide prevention, with Save Our Shores. This is what I mean by, you know, a real scope of activism, right? So. Steve is, is uh, Steve was, quote, new to our community a few years ago. The mark that this activist has made is indelible and it's undeniable because in his selection of issues, the ability to move people, make a difference, practical, sensible, never-endingly progressive, fair, and with huge amounts of human dignity, Please join me in honoring Steve Plage. Thank you, Leah. You, you will, of course, note that I'm the tallest Dory, which is a long to be here. It was uh, Franklin Roosevelt who, who famously said about public speaking, uh, be sincere, be brief, be seated. <laughs> Mustering all the brevity that I can, and uh, as people know me, I love public speaking above just about everything else. Uh, I will tell you simply this. When I look out in this room, I see every person here working every day to make our community a better place. And each one of you do it without fanfare, without public acclamation. You do it in your own way. And that's what makes our community so strong, so vital, and so progressive. So to be recognized as a member of this group is an honor that is truly, truly touching and appreciated. So that is sincere. That is brief. And with a thank you, I will be seated. <laughs> deprived 
Some of you may feel depraved, I don't know. But if any of you are feeling the need to spend money on your way out the door and get good feelings in return for it, feel free to keep dropping money in a variety of containers. But thank you all for being here. Is there a certificate for the winner of Best Dress? And yes, thank you very much, Brian. Good day, friends. In recognition of spiffiness, Zach is receiving a $20 gift certificate to Goodwill. I commit to all of you, like every elected official does, that I will send you a photo of what I buy, and I will wear it. <laughs>